And now to discuss this a bit more further, we're now joined by Musawenko Simkize, a student uh, from the University of Cape Town that has won the Tata Consultancy Services second annual Sustainathon uh, South Africa competition that provides a platform to address real life environmental issues through policy, design and innovation. Team Aman Zimbilo was selected among 10 finalists uh, for their innovative solution to this year's theme, Sustainable water and sanitation management and Musa Wengosi joins us now for more on this uh, discussion. Musa Wengosi, thank you so much uh, for joining us here on uh, the late edition perhaps. Uh, tell us uh, first about uh, this uh, competition you won. Uh, you know, how does it work? Um, you know, and uh, why did you uh, partake in this competition? Uh, good evening and thank you so much for having me on your program. Um, <coughs> Well, the composition is the TCSA, uh, TCSA Sustainathon 2023, which is hosted by Tata Consultancy Services. Um, and basically, the theme for this year, as you've mentioned, was water and sanitation. And um, TCSA is an IT services company that presents, uh, is present in South Africa and for almost 15 years now, I think. And they are having the sustainable funds basically to try and address the, um, uh, the UN um, sustainable um, goals. Mm. And when it comes to the severity of uh, the water challenges, I mean, uh, we've seen uh, the problems in this country. Sometimes we experience uh, problems around drought. Um, you know, even earlier this year, we saw uh, problems in the Hamansklal area where residents, uh, you know, were sick because of uh, the water that uh, they were consuming. And from your research, uh, what did you find were the problems that contributed to the water problems we see in this country? So the problems that we have um, in terms of water in this country are vast, right? So one, we're a semi-arid country, which means that um, we receive around 50% of the rainfall that the rest of the world, um, the, the average of the rest of the world. Um, and as you mentioned on the reports, then there's infrastructure issues, um, then there's um, a lot of other issues in terms of um, the, the decaying of the infrastructure, and also just the, uh, the infrastructure not being available to everyone. Um, what we, well, what I decided to do, or, or what we decided to do on my research, was to focus on one particular issue, which was the wastage part, right? So, for example, we clean water; it goes through a wastewater treatment plant. Um, it then gets pumped all the way to your house in the CBDs, right? And then when it gets there, what do we do with it? We flush with it. We flush mm -hmm. with clean drinking water. We irrigate our gardens with clean drinking water. We even mix concrete. So um, what my research then said is, what if we could actually try and reuse gray water, which is shower water, laundry water, for these activities that absolutely do not need the water to be at the cleaning, at the clean or at the drinking uh, at the drinking level cleanliness, um, which is a waste of energy. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we then presented at the Sustainathon was then how could we use IoT technology to then automate this process and make it much easier and much, much more palatable to the end use customer. Because one of the issues also is that um, we do not accept these solutions because there's this stigma with um, reusing wastewater yeah. or water that you've showered with. Yeah. Yeah, and because now you have won uh, this competition, you and you are telling us about uh, you know uh, the solutions uh, that uh, you know uh, you have given uh, to the country in terms of using grey water. You know, how did it come about? How did you find out that you know there are ways in which South Africans can reuse grey water? Um, so uh, I, I studied civil engineering. Um, I graduated last year, um, and. When I was doing my uh, when I was doing my undergrad, one I, we I was in Cape Town. I did civil engineering at the University of Cape Town, and I was uh, I heard about the drought and I experienced the drought. So that that was the first part of it. So the second part of it is when I spoke to my lecturer um, about this issue during one of our lessons and asked him why don't we reuse grey water, right? Because we have it in abundance, right? And he said to me basically there's three issues here. One is the fact that grey water can be toxic if it is not treated and managed properly. Mm -hmm. And then two is that there's a huge demand for trained professionals, you know, as our country is lacks in skills. I think you mentioned it also in terms of the report that came out, it said that we lack in skills to operate and run um, some of these solutions. Then the third one was perception. 
then what our solution does is that it uses IoT technology to tell you when the water is too toxic for you not to be able to reuse it. So basically, you have sensors that measure the, uh, the toxicity of the water um, in real time and sends you the information over your computer or over um, your phone. And then the second thing is, that part of sending the, the data um, online means that the engineer doesn't have to go to sites, right? Which means that they save money in terms of the cost of operation. So you can have an engineer monitoring one or even up to six sites at the same time. And then the third one is, of course, you know, every time you say um, uh, sensors, uh, AI, machine learning, everyone gets excited. So as soon as you say that using your wastewater with those things, then it sounds like, oh, maybe this is a cool thing. I could reuse my shower water. So that's the part, that, that's, those are the three main issues that we're trying to basically solve with this. Mm -hmm. um, the, of course, we're in ideation phase and the, applica uh, the applications are absolutely um, uh, they the endless. There's many ways that we believe that we can uh, we can we can apply this from student residences in universities up to residences like um, uh, apartments, even going all the way to even wastewater treatment plants. Mm. And what would you say are the pros and cons here of uh, using this grey water? Because, uh, you know, you were talking earlier about uh, a stigma attached to it, that some people uh, would not want to use it in their homes. And at the same time, one would say uh, that when it comes to grey water, it can be sometimes mistaken uh, for drinkable water. So what would you say here uh, would be the pros and cons in terms terms of using uh, grey water? Um, so that's a very good question. And um, from doing research, I've always focused on the cons, um, on the pros <laughs> more than the cons. Um, but it, it, just to touch on um, the, the cons, because I've gone through it a lot. So the first thing is you say you, you don't. So when you flush with clean drinking water, just like this, right? Mm. You don't only save the, you don't only waste these liters of water. You also waste the energy that was used to clean this water, the electrical energy, um, the chemical energy that was used. Because dams in South Africa and in a lot of parts um, of the world are of an average of 400 kilometers away from the end user. So, for example, the dams that supply Joburg, right, are all the way in Val and all the way from the uh, from Lesotho. So there's energy, electricity, and that's why when we had load shedding, these issues came up, right? So that's the first part. The second part is, I think what it does, it also consciousizes the user in terms of how much water they're using daily, right? So that's the second part. And then the third, um, the third part, there's a couple of them, but the, the third part is, which makes me very excited about this, is that the solution is not only just um, environmentally sustainable or socially yeah. sustainable, it's also financially sustainable. One of the um, part of my research was that, for example, with the University yeah. of Cape Town, if they were to recycle grey water from just one of their student residences, which means that they take the, um, the water from the students after showering, they use that water to flush their toilets, the university could save up to 3.1 million All rand right. annually. Mm. Absolutely crazy. So for me, those are some of the cons. And yeah. I mean, the pros. And then the cons, I think there's a lot of development that has to go into it. Of course, this is still an ideation phase. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of research that has to go in in terms of selecting yeah. the right materials and making sure that the materials do not clog and all those things. Yeah. And yeah. Musa Mengosi, now that uh, you've won this competition and you have this great idea to save, uh, you know, municipalities money, uh, where to from here? Uh, when will we see this uh, being implemented in some municipalities? Um, so at the, uh, at the moment, for example, with such a great platform that um, TCSA, um, as I said, on, or the Tata Consultancy Services provided, there's a lot of opportunities in terms of what I think this country, again, needs a lot from the private sector. There's a lot of um, enthusiasm from them to try and collaborate to, for us to work on something going forward. But I think for me, there's also just a lot of excitement in terms of industry wanting to green up their buildings right so you have um these organizations where they um they give you ratings if you leave if your building is much more sustainable so what we believe is that one we're gonna then have the opportunity to um ideate and iterate our our, our prototype which i'm glad to I'm actually excited to say that we've yeah. actually installed it in one of the offices here um in, in um here in cape town where we're yeah. monitoring or helping them to actually use um wastewater to flush their toilets so all right. we, we're doing baby steps. I mean, yeah. we, we're excited, but we're doing baby steps. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you so much uh, for your time.